Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to look at a profiling example in the version 25 that has to do with cut order. So you can see we have a, a couple of shapes that we want to cut out and we want to do all these inside profiles here. So I've run the, the stock wizard, chose rectangular and just let it pick up on the minimum maximum of the part. And then as far as the zero, I'm just using the, uh, the world coordinate system as my zero. Okay, so from here I'm going to just load a two axis profile. So we'll do profile, select geometry. I'm going to window in here, and this is shift left click, and I'm just going to grab this, uh, this first group of holes uh, or slots that I want to work with. So shift clicking uh, all the way through these. Once I get them all done, I'm going to hit my space bar to lock in my selection. I'm going to come through and uh, set up my tool information. And uh, all the other settings I'm really not concerned with. Um, machine sequence is what we're going to want to look at here. But I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, finish. And then I will come over to my profile and compute. And what you can see is I have the toolpath generated for, for all these slots here. Okay. So now I want to add all of these uh, slots to my selection. So what I'm going to do is just add another layer here and I'm going to select all these outside shapes like so and then I'm going to move them over to this unnamed layer and then I'll turn that off. This time I'm going to remove, reselect, I'm going to window pick all of these shapes here and then I'm going to go ahead and compute them. Now you can see how there there's some sorting, you can see how it's going through this group and and it's kind of coming through and, and selecting these shapes. Uh, you have some control over the sorting order. So we can go to machine sequence. We can say Y direction and compute. Um, I'm still seeing some irregularities in here. I'm not sure exactly what that's related to just yet. So let's just uh, blank out our stock for a second. And you can kind of see how it's jumping around a little bit. What I want to do is I want to check for double entities. Sometimes you can have uh, double entities and, and that will affect your uh, cutting order and that's exactly what we found here. You can see, let's see, if I select this one here and I delete, see how when I select this and I delete, see how it's still there? Um, that is an indication of double entities. If I select this one over here and delete, you can see how it goes away. If I select this one here and delete, see how it doesn't. So what that means is there's geometry on top of geometry. Now that's not always the easiest thing to find. So one of the things we're going to do in order to clean that up, again, we'll create a new layer here and we're going to move all this geometry over to its own layer. So move it over to its own layer. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. Now, um, again, the sorting order works. So if it's not cutting in the order that you think it should be, uh, it, you know, it, a lot of times it's geometry related. Um, some experience, you know, will play a role in this, like being able to pick up that there's there's double entities in some of these groups. Um, that has to do with how they were created. So to clean that up, we're going to just go to utilities, reorganize, erase doubles. We'll window everything in, spacebar. That will get rid of the double entities. We'll come back over to our feature here. We're going to remove, reselect, window everything in, and then we'll compute that. And now you can see we have a nice uh, clean cutting order. Uh, if we want to come back and change our sequence maybe to X orientation, we can do that. So now it's cutting in X. Um, or we can come back and, and change this to Y orientation, you know, and now it's going to cut in Y. Now the trick here is we want to save this file. We want to close the file. Then we want to open it back up. So I'm going to open it back up. From here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just remove my selection reselect, choose all, spacebar, and compute, and we'll see that our cutting order has stayed the same. So I, in this case, the real culprit here 
was the double entities. So that's a line on top of a line. In order to clean that up, you go to utilities, reorganize, erase doubles, and that will take care of that problem. Now, another thing you can do here, because you have so many different parts, um, you may want to do a translation. So instead of selecting all these shapes, which can be problematic, especially if you want to change your start position, uh, that could be a real pain. Um, what you can do is remove your selection and then maybe select one of these. Okay. And then uh, let me just turn everything else off for just a second and I'll compute this. Let me blank out my stock. Okay, so we have this one profile selected. You know, now what you can do is you can right click on that feature and you can go to add toolpath pattern. And then this is uh, an array style. So instead of having to draw those shapes out, we can really just program one of these slots. We can do an array. We can say the distance in X, so I'm gonna make it up. Let's say it's five, and we want five copies, and the dis distance in Y, we're gonna say is eight, and we want, you know, uh, 16 copies. So you can uh, adjust your, your values here, choose okay, and now you can see my numbers were way off, but you get the idea. Let me go back and edit that. We can come back and edit. Um, distance in Y, let's make two inches, and we want five copies. Uh, distant, okay, let's see at that. Okay, so now we're kind of bringing it in. I'd have to measure the original shape in order to figure out the increment, but again, what's really nice about this is if I want to change my uh, start position, I can change my start position just for this slot. So instead of it be here, maybe I wanted it here, spacebar and compute. So now what I've done is I've updated that start position for all these shapes. Um, you know, toolpath patterns are a great way, especially when, when you're dealing with um, shapes where there's a lot of copies of the same thing. You know, in, in order to figure this out, uh, Let's do dimension vertical. So I'm gonna say from here to here, I get this value. Okay, so now when I come back into my pattern, uh, the distance in Y is gonna be um, 0.875. And then I have to count the number of copies. So let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that right? So, or no, there's ten. Okay, good. <laughs> so we have that. And then now I just want to find the distance uh, horizontal from uh, dimension horizontal. And I'm going to go from here to here. So that's 6.4, and there's one, two, three, four copies. So then we can go back and edit this. Now this is 6.4, and uh, what I say, one, two, three, four copies. All right, so now, uh, just by doing a little math there, we're able to figure it out. And again, we just programmed this one part. Now, if this is a family of parts and you need to adjust the spacing, instead of having to redraw everything, you can just come back to your pattern and adjust it. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, find this information useful, helpful, informative. Uh, if you have questions of your own or projects of your own you're working on and, and you'd like some insight on Bobcad, feel free to... Uh, uh, message me on the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever uh, thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.